Well, good morning, everyone. I want to thank uh, Ken Miller and Stacy for covering for last week. I am feeling a lot better, but I still have this throat thing, so sorry. As you'll hear, it's not always 100%, but I do feel a lot better. Today is the last day, friends, to order Easter flowers or to order ham loaves. So if you want either one of those, today's the day. Please get those orders in, and um, they'll be um, available. You can put your orders for the flowers in the office, and we'll make sure they get taken care of. And we're so thankful. Uh, Thank you again also for all the birthday wishes. Um, um, We're postponing celebrating (laughs) for a little bit, so we'll catch up eventually. But the birthdays continue. Today is Seth Irvin's and Mary Picarney's birthday. We're so glad she's with us. Happy birthday to you, Mary. John Souser's having his birthday. Vivian, uh, tomorrow, Vivian's is on Tuesday. Keith and Rosie are having their anniversary on Thursday. So happy anniversary to them. And Iris's birthday is on Saturday. So happy birthday and anniversary to everyone. Let's give them some love. Happy anniversary and birthday. All right, and that is all the announcements I have for this week. It's spring break, so there won't be any youth activities, and so um, we appreciate all our volunteers and staff for our youth program, and they'll get a needed break this week. God is good, friends, and all the time, let's prepare our hearts for worship.
Thank you, Ellie. Let's join together in the call to worship. Rejoice that the lost ones have been found. Let us give thanks this day and each day that God has found us. Join in welcoming all who God brings to us. We will join in the search to find those who are in need of God's mercy and grace. When we do, we will share the good news of Jesus. We will hear angels shout of gladness, praise, and thanks be to our God. Let's stand up and sing our opening praise, Alas, and did my Savior bleed. seated. Let's pray together. There is great rejoicing in heaven when the lost are found. Help us, O Lord, to be as thankful when those who have turned away from you are brought back and those who never knew you come into your kingdom. And us that we are all more precious to you than in, they should help us to treat others with the same kind of love and care. We ask this through the name of Jesus, the Savior of us all. Amen. Well, invite the youth and children up. It's their time this morning. Boy, an enthusiastic group. Lots of, need lots of help today. And in my excitement last week, I don't know what I did with my earpiece, so here we go. <laughs> How are you guys this morning? Awesome. All right, so I have some pictures. I need some help. All right. 
radio, okay? We might also call it a boombox, okay? Smart TV. Do you have one of these guys at your house? Yes. No. Do you have one, Van? No. Okay. What What makes it smart? What What can it can do, What can it do besides watch shows? So, okay. What do you think, RJ? So you can do it for more than just watch TV. Yeah. Wow. All right. Uh, computers. Com computers. Okay. Bless Phone. you. Phone. A room stitch. A letter. Okay. So what would we use all those things for? What could we use all those things? All of these things. What could we use all of these things for? messages. You are correct. So we are going to talk today about being messengers and sharing the good news. And we're going to read a Bible verse so you guys can help me read. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God, 2 Corinthians 5.20. Okay, what word in there tells us that we're going to be messengers delivering news? What one word? Carter, what word do you think? Ambassadors. Ambassadors. You are correct. So when we share the good news, called the gospel, we are being ambassadors. And believers are ambassadors. And God is in heaven, and he uses people here to share the good news. So the message, it, the good news that we want to share is that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and rose again. And in the Old Testament, we were talking about Jonah as a prophet. But we're also going to call him today an ambassador, because that he was given a special task. And in the Old Testament, many times, the message from God was to tell people, you have sinned and you need to change your ways. So that was true for Jonah. So last week we took a little break from Jonah, so we're going to come back and continue with Jonah. Does anybody remember what had happened to Jonah two weeks ago? Okay. He got swallowed by a whale. Yes, he certainly did. So you guys are going to help me tell the story. All right. All right, Carter, can you put on a crown for me? And here's your robe. Okay. And here's your sign. Okay. All right. Oh, let's see. I need a Jonah. Who's feeling very Jonah-ish? Okay, you're going to be Jonah. You're our ambassador today. All right, here's your seaweed. Please put that on. All right, I need a Nineveh sign holder. You want to be our... You're like our map. Okay, everybody else will get something in a little bit. All right. So here we are. As we recall, all right, Jonah, you're going to have to stand up so people can see you. Thank you. God came to Jonah a second time. Because remember, Jonah didn't listen the first time. So God gave Jonah a second chance. And when a person sins, God doesn't cast them away and say, well, you're done. That was it. Okay. He had a temporarily, oops, but God forgives and still can, that person can be used. So Jonah was in the belly of the whale, the big fish, and after three days, the fish sent him out. So he might have arrived covered in seaweed, probably kind of stinky and nasty and gross from being inside. Okay. So God said, go to Nineveh, and this time Jonah was going to listen. So Nineveh, can you please stand up? All right. And how about you stand over here, Nineveh? Thank you. All right. And all my other people, can you stand by, stand by Nineveh? Because you're Ninevites. All right, Mr. King, you stay right where you're at. 
All right, everybody else join in Nineveh. Thank you. So Jonah was given a second chance. So he goes to Nineveh as fast as possible. And he arrives covered in seaweed and stinky, and he delivers the message. Do you remember what the message was? What did God say he was going to do to to Nineveh in 40 days? Uh, Oh, need some help? Okay. So the message that Jonah brings to the people of Nineveh, in 40 days, you're going to be destroyed because you are sinful and evil and you need to change your ways. So Jonah presented the message. So now... Let's see how the people responded. So the people listened and heard the message, and they were very distressed and upset. They did not want to be destroyed by God. God called for for them to stop eating, which is called fasting, and sometimes we do that during Lent. Everyone put on a sackcloth. So, no, you do not, right? So put on a sackcloth. And she took off your regular clothes and you put on basically like a rag to show that you were in sorrow. Okay, okay, we don't want you to be left out. Have a sackcloth. All right. So they were showing that they were very sorry for what they had done. So they repented. They had a change of heart. Now, so the king, the king of Nineveh, his reaction is very important. And he could have been filled with very much pride when you're like, well, I don't want to listen to Jonah covered in seaweed and stinky. Why do I, the king, want to listen to him? But that was not his reaction. Mr. King, you got to stand up, sir. All right. So his reaction was the opposite, and he took off his crown, and he took off his robe, and he listened, and he listened, and he put on sackcloth as well. And he acknowledged, my people, my Ninevite people, are, are evil and have not done what God asked. And in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So he acknowledged his people were bad. And he knew that the only hope that they had was to listen to God, who is full of mercy and compassion and always gives us second chances. So he has provided a way for sinners to be delivered, and that is through faith in Jesus. God saw that the, wicked, that the king of Nineveh and all the people did and how they turned away from their wicked ways. He had compassion on the people and did not bring the destruction to the city that he had planned to send. So he saved Nineveh even though they had done wrong things in the end, because their hearts changed, he did not want to destroy them. So let's say a prayer. Dear Father, dear Father, we are thankful. We are thankful that even though that even though we don't always produce the right kind of fruit, we don't always produce the right kind of fruit. You give us a second chance. You give us a second chance. Help us to allow. Help us to allow Jesus to work in our lives. Jesus to work in our lives. So that we will produce. So that we will produce. The kind of fruit that you want from us. The kind of fruit that you want from us. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' Amen. name we pray. Amen. Thank you. If you guys would leave your set. <laughs> Good job. And now let's enjoy the choir anthem, Embracing the Cross.
We appreciate the choir sharing their gifts with us, and it reminds us that we all are invited to share our gifts with the Lord, and our gifts come in a variety of ways and talents that God has given us. Of course, He wants us to share the good news of the love that He has for us in Jesus Christ with others. That's the best gift we can offer someone. But also part of our giving is showing that we trust God um, in all sorts of ways. And the way we show it we trust God the best is when we financially give to the Lord. That's the way we show um, that we will be on God's side and that we will trust him. And, and also that we want to be participating in the work of his church throughout the world, not just here in our community. And so with joy and thanksgiving, let us uh, prepare to give our tithes and offerings to the Lord at this time. And don't forget to fill out the attendance register if you have a chance. And if you need to send anything up for the prayer time, please do that as well. We'll invite our ushers to come forward as we give our tithes and offerings.
Loving and gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that we can live in the United States of America, enjoy the freedom to worship you as we choose and as often as we like. And we ask, O oh Lord, now as we pause in our time of worship, that you accept all these gifts that have been given and those who have offered them. We ask, Lord, also that you multiply them and that you empower us to use all the many different gifts you pour into our lives, to share the good news of Jesus with others, to help them to come to know your great love and mercy for them, to know that they are important to you, just as we know we are important to you. And we thank you for that great truth that we know best because we do know Jesus, and it is his name always that we come. And all God's people say, amen. You may be seated. Well, we're concluding our Jonah series of uh, chapter 4, and uh, we skipped chapter 3 about Nineveh, but we'll talk a little bit about that today. But again, it's an easy book to read, and I hope you've all read it, and if not, you certainly can take it just in a few minutes and read it, the whole thing. And it's a hard journey uh, to journey with Jonah. It, might have been called Nineveh because of who Jonah is ministering to, but really it is about Jonah and the transformation that he needs to make in his own heart. Well, let's share God's word from Jonah chapter 4. We'll be looking at verses 1 through 4, and then again 10 through 11. This change of plans greatly upset Jonah, and he became very angry, slow to Wait, let me read my paper here. <laughs> this change of plans greatly upset Jonah, and he became very angry. So he complained to the Lord about it. Didn't I say before I left home that you would do this, Lord? That is why I ran away to Tarish. I knew that you are a merciful and compassionate God, slow to anger and to filled with unfailing love. You are eager to turn back from destroying people. Just kill me now, Lord. I'd rather be dead than alive if what I predicted will not happen. The Lord replied, Is it right for you to be angry about this? Then the Lord said, You feel sorry about the plant, though you did nothing to put it there. It came quickly, and it died quickly. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people living in spiritual darkness, not to mention all the animals. Shouldn't I feel sorry for such a great city? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to our great God. Now, I want you to think for a minute how wonderful it would be if everyone in our entire community of Dwight, that's only 4,000 people, but everyone in the surrounding community came to repentance and turned their lives towards the Lord. Think about what that would look like. We wouldn't be able to seat everyone in the building. No church would be able to seat everyone throughout the whole community. There aren't enough pew space for all those people. Think about what that would look like for families. No more money that needed to be used to pay bills and to buy groceries would be used on things like gambling. You know, that was one of the first things when um, we moved to Dwight that shocked me the most about Dwight was in the paper. Uh, they would post how much money was being uh, made or spent on gambling on different kinds of gambling. And I'm not saying that I'm opposed to gambling all in that way because if if you're if you like to use your recreational money for that, okay, that's that's your choice. You know, I like to use mine for other things. But the amount of money for the size of the community shocked me. And uh, I mean it was hundreds of thousands of dollars every month. And so it was shocking to me, and I thought about what was that money not being used for that it could have been used for that was just going up in, uh, in a 
pull-down slot or on some competitive. And right now, of course, it's March Madness, and I think about all the money uh, being lost on that, and it really grieves me now even that uh, there's a lot of opportunities, easy ways to gamble on that. And I, it's not that, it's that it's just such a waste to me, it seems to me to be a waste. And I just think what people could use that money for, for good. But regardless, of, even that's just one thing, but there's lots of different things. Think about if people didn't speak harshly to one another. Think about if people didn't use, you know, harsh and mean language, how different that might be in a home if, if kids were, you know, totally filled with joy in their hearts and didn't have hostility. We see so many kids sometimes that have such disrespect and hostility going on, rage even. And so how wonderful it would be if everyone's heart turned to the Lord. And that's what Nineveh had happened to them. From the greatest to the least in their community, everyone put on sackcloth and turned their hearts to the Lord. And that would be an amazing experience, no matter where you're at. If you've noticed it all in the past few months, Asbury Theological Seminary in Kentucky had that experience happen where people turned their hearts to the Lord. It began by eight people uh, just staying after an ordinary chapel service and praying, and one person confessing their sins and repenting, and everyone praying with them. And that grew into this massive time of prayer and revival. When everyone believes that God uh, means what God says, it changes everything. And it doesn't mean that you have to think of God as being destructive and God being against you, because as God keeps trying to tell Jonah, that's not who he is. God keeps trying to tell Jonah, I have mercy on people. Jonah wants a vengeful, wrathful God, and in fact, he's mad with God because God doesn't do what he wants him to do. But God, through all of this, is trying to help Jonah learn about him as well as, um, as the Ninevites. So the Ninevites all turn to the Lord, and Jonah is mad about it, and um, even they, the king comes off his throne. So you can imagine, think about our own mayor. He, would, he sent out a message to all of us that we needed to fast, that no one should take a drink or eat. And, we should, and then he himself put on sackcloth. And so you can imagine, you know, just raggy clothes. And then what they did was they would throw ashes on their heads because they all had fires. So they throw ash on their head to show their repentance. Imagine if we were all walking around looking like that. That would be a dramatic response. So the question is, when you hear God's call on your life, what is your response? Let's watch our video about Jonah again, just this little brief clip about God's call on our lives. So what the Ninevites did was everyone uh, turned back to the Lord away from their violence. And that was their biggest sin was their violence and destruction towards each other. And we see that when people um, have a pridefulness and an arrogance in their life. Sometimes they speak more harshly, they, they can speak more demeaning to others, but God wants them to live in a new way. He doesn't want them to keep living in this violence. He wants to live in mercy and love and gentle kindness, and that's what God wants for all of us. He doesn't want us to live in harsh circumstances. He doesn't want us to be people who tend towards hostility towards others. He wants us instead to tend towards a gentle, loving kindness. And for all of them to take this on and to put on like this guy has, sackcloth and ashes, it's shocking. Everyone in the story gets it except Jonah, God's person, God's prophet. And so that's always a warning when we hear Jonah for us Christians. Have we gotten it? Are we willing to be submissive to God and to, to make a change in our own lives to invite others to make that change? And that it's important and it can be life-giving. And what we forget about 
is that these people who are living in hostility, when they change their lives, we all benefit. We forget that we benefit when people turn back to the Lord. And Jonah doesn't seem to get it either, that he's going to get, he's going to benefit from it as well. Instead, he's mad that God, God won't kill them and won't destroy them. And when he gets done with his message, he sits down to watch. It's an odd thing. Jonah is not praying for them to repent. He's not praying for them. Instead, he's just being a voyeur. And how often are we like that towards others? Do you see people struggling and you kind of sit down to watch them? He doesn't even offer a prayer for them. And he really struggles through this whole journey to know the Lord. Jonah is God's man, but he does not know God's loving kindness in his own heart. Or he knows it for himself, but he doesn't want it for other people. You know, we can do that same struggle in our own lives as Christ followers. We want and enjoy God's loving kindness towards ourselves, God's mercy. Of course, we want it for ourselves. But do you want it for the people who you don't like? Maybe people who've harmed you or said harsh things to you or, or spoken in a, you know, brought violence into your life in some way. Jonah's story is about someone who knows the Lord but doesn't know him really at all. He's close to him, but he's not close enough. You know, Jesus came to save all people, and his loving kindness is offered to all. God so loved the whole world that he gave us Jesus. And that's one thing in Jonah's favor is at least God's loving kindness is even for him. But you have to live it yourself before you can help other people know it. And Jonah does at least love God enough to to know who God is as that he's worthy of worship. But he doesn't really seem to have a loving relationship with God. He can't seem to let go of trying to control God. And what about you? Do you like to remake God in your image? Or do you want God to remake you into his image? Jonah had a very trying experience in his life. He had a near-death experience before he came back to the Lord. He, he had quit praying. He had quit turning himself to God. And he, had, he was asleep in the <coughs> base of the ship. Now, that sleep wasn't a peaceful sleep. I would say that was a depressive sleep. I'd say Jonah even had, because he was unrepentant, and unforgiving towards others, was in a depressive state. You know, think how quick in Jonah's story the sailors and the Ninevites turned to the Lord. If God had told you you had 40 days to make a change, how quick would you make that change? Maybe you've been told by someone that you need to make a change, like your doctor. (laughs) Lay off the fried foods, they might tell you. Get some exercise. How quick do we respond? But the sailors and the Ninevites, they quickly respond to God's call. They believe God. And that's what's counted to them as righteous. We know in the Bible that's what counts, is if you believe what God says. If you believe that God means what God says. And God is trying to tell us. He's telling us, wake up. Jonas, get out of your depression and start loving the people I want you to love. Because today is the day of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. It's not time for us to wait. It's time for us to wake up and don't wait for a near-death experience. Consider someone who feels the call into the military. Now, we have many wonderful people here in Dwight who committed their lives in service to our country through the military. They've answered that call. We have Donnie who's serving right now from our church. Now, to be faithful like Donnie is, they take their training and they prepare for battle to the very best of their ability. And we want them to do that, right? We want our military to be ready to face the evils of this world. So they can go and serve as they're asked to do, and they do that faithfully. But consider someone like Donnie, who's a person of faith. And maybe the Lord might come to him 
and put on his heart that he needs to be praying for some of our enemies overseas. Maybe the Lord puts on their hearts to pray for the leaders of these countries that we're, we're, you know, that are against and ask for them to turn back to the Lord and turn back to them. Now, does that mean that if they should stop preparing for battle? <coughs> no, they need to do both. They need to continue praying and they need to continue doing their work. And that's what we're called to do too. We can pray for our enemies and those who really challenge us, and we need to. And we can pray for our own selves to have a change of heart towards them. And we can keep doing the work of the kingdom as we do it. That's where Jonah fell short. He didn't pray for the Ninevites. He didn't pray for God's mercy. He only wanted their destruction. And God is continuing to try to invite us (coughs) and Jonah to live in a new way, to change our own hearts. So we can consider giving yourself to God fully and serving him as he calls you. You know, Jonah was asleep in the thing because he was depressed, I think, and about his unforgiveness for these other people. Because unforgiveness weighs on us as much as it does on them. And the first sign we see that Jonah's in trouble is that he stopped praying. That's the first indication for you if you're in trouble spiritually, if you stop praying. So today, invite yourself to take up the call to pray. And then let your conversations be gentle and gracious. Let the words that you use (coughs) reflect a love and and invitation to others. Listen to what you're saying. You know, when you listen to Jonah from the outside, it's rather ridiculous. His language is harsh and judging and painful, and it's kind of silly. He, he shows that he really is struggling because he keeps saying, just kill me, just kill me. But when death comes knocking at his door, he then finally turns to the Lord. So consider the language you use. Are you quick to praise and give thanks to God, or are you quick to be critical about yourself and about others? Expand your vision and your voice. We're God's people, and God gives us wonderful blessings and grace into our lives, and he gives us opportunities to share that grace with others. So try to examine yourself. How gracious and attractive are you when you talk? Are you someone people enjoy coming near and being drawn to? Are you a person who asks questions about others? Or are you a person who just tells others how it is? God has a better way for all of us. And don't worry if you're not living the way God wants you to. You can start at any moment. God never gave up on the Ninevites. God didn't give up on Jonah. And God never gives up on us. Let's pray together. (coughs) loving and gracious heavenly father just help us to be the people you call us to be we thank you for jonah and his hard lessons that remind us that you call all sorts of people to serve you and you're calling us to serve you help us to examine our hearts on whether we do believe you are full of mercy and loving kindness that you are concerned about people that hurt us, even as you are concerned about us, and that you want the best for us, which means to let go of this pain of, of unforgiveness, and instead to call upon you for mercy and grace for ourselves and also for them. We know, O Lord, only when people make life-changing experiences of your love, does our world change for good? So Lord, right now, help us to be instruments of that peace in this world. Help us not to just ignore others or think that they don't matter, but draw them to us and draw attention to help us to have our attention brought on who you want us to be more loving toward. And help us always to start with ourselves and our families to show grace and peace, and to be the people that you invite us to be, to do good work, 
It's not easy, but it is always good. We ask all these things, O Lord, through the precious name of your Son, Jesus. And all God's people say, Amen. Well, as we come to our time of prayer, we'll keep praying. Um, many of us learned that Janice Madsen passed away last uh, Sunday morning, so continue to be in prayer for her family. They're not doing a memorial service at this time. <coughs> well, I thought I was a lot better, but apparently I'm not. <coughs> Goodness. <coughs> Ferris, who's found a lump in her groin and is being tested for that. And Mike Krieger has continued to have tests and others that are upon our hearts and minds. And be with all the travelers during uh, spring break time and others who need our prayers. Let's go to God together, first individually and silently. Our hearts are before you right now. We just ask that you forgive us for the ways that we judge others harshly. For the times when we do not believe in your mercy and grace, we don't want it for them. Instead, we want their destruction. But show us a new way. Show us the way of Christ. Right now, O oh Lord, as our hearts are before you, we just ask that you transform them for good. We pray, O oh Lord, your special anointing and blessing on those who are sick, those who are going through testing and, and looking for answers, that you will walk with them and give them your peace. We pray for all those who are dealing with these colds and flus, that you will heal us and deliver us from these scourges that continue to challenge us. We thank you for the ways that you do heal your people, and you promise that when we turn to you, when we call upon you, that our land will be healed. And so we are calling upon you and turning our hearts towards you. We ask, O oh Lord, that you be near those who don't know your loving mercy right now, and that you show us ways that we can share the good news of Jesus with them. We thank you that you raise us up and that you don't leave us in our stubbornness or in our selfishness, but instead you continue to call us into deeper service with you, to know you deeply and to know your love for others in new ways. Lord, we do think of all those who are grieving and we ask that you continue to be with the Madsen family and others that are grieving. May your special hope and peace be with them. We pray for all those who are traveling and ask that you surround them with your protection and let them have wonderful experiences, but bring them home safely. And we do pray for our military and ask that you protect them as they bring freedom into our world and help them to know your love and to know you walking with them in their service to us. And Lord, we especially ask that you just bless each of us, that we can know you better and that we cannot try to make you into our image, but that we humble ourselves and will allow you to make us into your image. Lord, thank you for your great love that we do know best because of Jesus. And we pray that you continue to help us to become more like him through the power of your Holy Spirit. We continue in our time of prayer as we have been praying together praying the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand together and sing our closing praise beneath the cross of Jesus. now receive the benediction. As you go forth, go forth in the name of our loving Heavenly Father, in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in the communion of the Holy Spirit. Go forth to live and share God's loving kindness and mercy, first with yourself and your family, and then out into your work world and into our community, so that many can come to call upon the name of our great God and know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and know his promise that he is with us always. Go forth in that truth, living God's love this day, for God is with us. Amen. Amen.